Hey, what's going on guys? My name is SilentCore and welcome back to another Red Dead video. Now today I have 15 tips for the trader role that you guys must know. These tips are going to make you thousands and thousands of dollars and help you on your way to rank 20 in the trader role. So let's get right into that first tip. So the first one is quite an important one and I've seen some players trying to hold out and not buy the medium delivery wagon and holding out until they can purchase a large one. I guess these players are just trying to save themselves spending the $500 on the medium wagon and going straight for the large one when they reach trader rank 10. However, these people are going to be disappointed to find out that when they get rank 10, they won't be able to purchase and use the large one without first owning the medium one. So don't make this mistake guys, make sure you do purchase the medium delivery wagon, it's going to hold 50 units and really speed up the XP you're going to be getting on your sales. For the next tip, I'm going to be sharing the exact sale prices you're going to be getting for a near and distant sale for each delivery vehicle. So the first one, you'll be selling 25 units, you'll get 62 versus 78 for a far sale. And then when you get the medium delivery vehicle and you're able to sell 50 units at once, you'll be getting $150 for a Neil sale and $187 for a distant sale. And then the large wagon will allow you to get $500 for the local sale and $650 for the far sale. And that brings me nicely onto tip number three, and that is you get more value for your wares the more you sell at once. So this is quite similar to the way businesses work in GTA Online and why it's better to sell, say for example, a full warehouse of goods rather than just half a warehouse because the units actually get more valuable when you sell them in bulk. So you always want to make sure you fill up your delivery vehicle full before you sell it. Tip number four is that your camp location is very important. From what I've seen, the best locations that you can have your camp set up is either Big Valley, Chola Springs, Great Plains, and also the Heartlands. All of these locations have a great deal of animals roaming nearby such as bucks that you can get and just bring them back to your camp for materials. Personally I like to set up my camp at either the Heartlands or the Great Plains. I find it's a nice central location on the map near Blackwater. If I'm wanting to do any other challenges or missions around that, those areas I find it's quite an easy area to get to. And also the sail missions are also very easy. The next tip that you guys must know is that you should never buy supplies. You should always do the resupply missions yourself. You'll be able to do a resupply run every time Crips produces 25 units of product. If you've played GTA Online, you're probably in the habit of always buying supplies since in that game in the long term it's much more efficient to just buy them and then do other money making methods in the meantime while it's being resupplied. However, in Red Dead Online, the resupply missions are actually much more efficient to do yourself. You'll not only be saving yourself $20, which is how much it costs to buy supplies, but you'll be also getting great XP from completing that resupply mission. It's actually one of the fastest ways to level up your trader role. And not to mention, the resupply missions are very quick to complete. They're usually something very simple, such as grabbing a wagon very nearby your camp, or, you know, hunting a nearby animal. The next tip is to sell local when you're using the small or medium wagons. The reason you want to do this is because the amount of money you get for a long sale versus a local sale just isn't really worth it. The long sales are going to be a huge trek literally across the map. I had one long distance sale that was literally from Blackwater all the way to Saint Denis which took forever. The only time it's actually worth doing a long sale is when you reach level 10 in the trader role and you're able to purchase the large delivery vehicle. Once you have the largest delivery wagon, that can hold 100 units and will get you 500 for selling locally versus 625 for selling distant. So having that extra $125 makes the large sales worth it. Next up, selling distant supplies will actually inform other players in your lobby that you're making a sale. So this literally makes you a moving target on the map when you're doing a distant sale. However, when you do a local sale in Red Dead Online, it's actually going to be a stealthy sale because the game isn't going to inform other players that you're doing it. Next up, you never want to donate feathers into your camp. They are highly, highly undervalued and it's not really worth it even donating them. What you want to do is sell things like feathers to the butcher and that way you actually get some value back from it. Tip number 10 is you want to be donating materials to your camp 
while you're training the other roles. And this is one of the best things about being a trader, is it can be managed relatively passively. What I like to do is bring in bounties, and between each couple of bounties, I'll bring in some materials to my camp. So I'll be actively looking out for bucks or deer, and I can bring those back between my bounty runs. And as long as you keep your camp topped up with supplies, it's going to keep generating stock with you while you do other things in the game. If you're playing solo, you can transport two medium sized animals using your lasso. All you want to do is store one of those medium animals on the back of your horse and then use your lasso on the second carcass and you can literally drag it across the ground all the way to your camp. This surprisingly won't even damage the condition of the pelt, so if it's a 3 star perfect animal you can drag it across water, through dirt and it'll still be in perfect condition when it gets to the camp. Unskinned carcasses are worth more than pelts, so never skin your animals guys, Crips won't even accept a skinned carcass if you bring it to him, so the parts are almost worthless and it's just much better to take the animal carcass to your camp and leave it unskinned. Next up, you always want to try and get perfect animal carcasses where possible. If you're having a 2 star or even a 1 star animal, it's going to have a huge impact on the amount of materials you're getting from that animal. To put this into perspective, if you have a poor pronghorn carcass, it's only going to be worth 2.6 worth units of material. Whereas if you have a perfect pronghorn carcass, it's going to be worth 6.5 units of material. So that's almost triple the materials you're getting from a 3 star versus a 1 star animal. So always try to get those perfect kills guys. Moving on to tip number 14, once you reach level 10 in the trader role, you can unlock the hunting wagon for $875. The hunting wagon can store multiple large carcasses in it and it can substantially increase the XP you're going to be getting as a trader and just make your hunting runs a lot more efficient. Another great thing about the hunting wagon is if you fill it up with fish and animals, it's actually still going to hold those in your wagon if you disconnect. It's basically like saving those things in a chest. So it's not like when you have an animal stored on the back of your horse and you disconnect and lose it, it's actually going to be saved onto your hunting wagon. And that leaves me with the last tip I have for you all, and it's that you can get a 25% boost to all trader XP you earn by purchasing the Outlaw Pass. And if you haven't already purchased the Outlaw Pass, you definitely need to. It has an upfront cost of 35 gold bars, and you will get a ton of rewards. You'll see me ranking up in the gameplay and just earning so many rewards each time I rank up. If you're a new player, 35 gold bars might sound like a lot of money, but you'll literally be earning that 35 gold bars back from the rewards, plus more. And that was all 15 tips and tricks that you guys need to know for trading the trader role. I'm probably going to have another video up tomorrow or the next day going over the collector, and that one's quite a complex role, so it's probably going to be at least 15 tips, probably more like 20. If you did enjoy this video or learned anything new, I'd really appreciate if you could take a second to leave it a like, really helps support my YouTube channel and go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss out on any future Red Dead videos. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and I'll catch you in the next video.